Hi everyone, welcome back to the MuleSoft Overload, a better place to learn MuleSoft in practice. Now let us see how to work with libraries. In order to use libraries, you need to use the keyword uses and then import your library like rest of import statements but without exclamatory include. While you're using the keyword uses, you should not mention exclamatory include. This doesn't work for library importation. Now in the same folder of data types, go ahead and create a library file. Choose the specification as library and name the file as library.raml. The way you define library and data type is entirely different. If you are defining data types in a library, then you have to use the starting tag as types. Under the types you can associate multiple data types. Here our primary data type under the libraries will be employee list. So what is a library? A library is a combination of multiple data types in a single library file. Whereas a data type file can only hold a single type declaration for a specific example. You cannot define multiple types in a single data type file. And that's the reason why we use library.raml files. Now this is how a data type definition in a library looks like. To show you a library use case, we will first create a duplicate resource like get list. We will remove the body section cause get doesn't support body. We will replace the status 201 from 200. Simply copy the example and the type from line number 81 and 82 to 98 and 99. But this time Instead of taking your type from data types such as complex type, we will take our type from the library complex lib. And you have to also mention the name of the type dot employee list. This is where it's evident that library dot raml file holds on to multiple data types. It can be any other types like browser. You can name whatever you like. The visual representation is shown on the right hand side. Along with the data types like simple type and complex type, we also have types like browser, which is a rough type object. We can directly represent an example to this type in this manner. You can define the properties associated with this type browser. These are the properties, record number, part number, name, brand, browser type, etc. The last field in the browser type in line number 47 is referencing to another type called model tree. This is of a type object and these are the properties which are associated with it. Model tree reference, brand, series, construction series, body type, etc. Here the character question mark dictates whether our property is required or not. So our properties like level code, AG model code, UK model code are not mandatory. We have two more types like status and transaction. Each has its associated properties. Transaction has properties like status which is referencing to the status data type and it has few more properties like data which is a type object and it has properties like browser which is referencing to the browser type which we have shown you at the beginning. Here the square brace indicates that the browser object is an array. Now let us remove these types from the root file and 
paste it in the library.raml file to make it more consistent. As you can see, a library file can hold multiple types. Each type can be referenced as per our wish. But when you're trying to reference a library of data types, you have to use the keyword uses. And just to show you an example, you can replace the employee list types from the complex lib with browser. Now it's going to show you a series of errors where the listed example doesn't have the properties associated with this type. So as you see, it's showing that the properties like CRM group, CRM subgroup, brand, browser type, model tree name are not part of the post employees.json file. Instead of declaring the whole 200 response in the main root file, if you feel that this response can be used across multiple resources, then you can simply remove this definition from this place and put it in the traits.raml file. Now, create a trait called a special trait and reference the trait in your resource under the description. So you define it as ease colon special trait. I have created a new alternate raml file with the title alternate. The name of the file is sample raml2. Here you can see how I'm referencing traits without importing it from traits.raml. Here I'm trying to directly represent the traits from line number 5 till 13. And moreover, you can also see that I'm directly representing the type song in the root file instead of taking it from a data types folder. This is also a direct representation of data types. Here, I can define the type object, the schema format which it's following, the properties. Here the properties are song title, album ID, each has an associated type and these are required fields. There are also other keywords like minimum length and maximum length. So here the minimum length is 36 and the maximum length is 36. Which means that your, the length of your album ID cannot be less than or greater than 36. You can also choose which type of traits you want to associate with your resource. Here I am associating client ID required for this resource books. It is also possible to represent the example in direct representation. So if you can see from line number 60, the example is not imported from a separate file or a folder. It's directly represented in the root file. In the trade section, we also have query parameters, but I'm not associating them here. In similar fashion, we're also referencing security schemes which are under the type basic. So this is the tag definition. Secured by colon under square base in, inside square braces you have to mention basic. Usually when you have two or more traits associated with a single resource we use this representation of square braces. If, you were, if your intention is to use a single type of trait then you can remove the square braces. Now I have created a resource called as author books which has a URI parameter books title and this time I'm not referencing to my traits from a traits type. I'm directly referencing my query parameters under the get method. This is also a direct representation of your traits. Here the trait query parameters consist of uh, author and publication year. The display name for the query parameter author will be the type will be string and you can give a description. The example for this query parameter will be Mary Coach and this query parameter is not mandatory so hence you can define it as false.
Now you can completely replace your special trait by directly representing the traits in your root file. Go ahead and paste your traits in your root file in this manner. Now I'm creating an additional response 400 and I'm using the same example post employees.json and the type employee list from complex lib. This is just to show you that you can use different types of responses under the response trait. It can be 200, 400, 201, 503, etc. Now let's focus on the URI parameter books title under the resource author books. Here the URI parameter is a type of parameter which is associated usually with the resource itself. So it's a kind of resource. It accepts any kind of value. So I can give my URI parameter as Mary Coach, uh, which means that uh, the, I want to retrieve a specific author from this uh, resource auto books I can also fetch the list of books associated with the author Leo it can be Martin you can fetch any type of information which is usually associated with this query parameter from this particular resource here under the author books, if I mention my URI parameter as Titanic, Mary Coach, etc., whatever the book which is actually named with that particular reference is going to be pulled out from our uh, application and will be displayed to the user. As you can see on the right hand side, we have the list of resources where we have author books and the URI parameter books title which is represented in flower braces. It is also to be noted that this resource has two different methods. You, it accepts a get method and also a put method. It's not mandatory that you have to associate a single method to a single to, to a particular resource. Based upon the type of method you are trying to access, that method will be used when an actual user is trying to uh, pull information uh, based upon its relevance. Now you can try mocking this service, uh, hit, hit on mocking service and you can pass a book's title, uh, the URI parameter. You can also pass the list of query parameters. Uh, here these are the query parameter values which I'm going to pass. And when you hit send, it's going to send us a 200 response Oh, it is going to send us a 200 response. Here we haven't defined any example for that resource. So we will not be able to see any response for this resource. Once you're done with your ML specification, you can go ahead and publish your ML. You can choose the asset ID and the version of your ML file. 
now I'm facing an error while publishing my RAML file because there's a incomplete piece of code which is creating an error so uh, the error is being caused by the example where I have to mention it as a string but I have given a number so let me correct this and try publishing my code choose the asset id as 1.0.0 and hit publish now you will be given a pop up where it's trying to uh, uh, where it's asking whether to include the unreferenced files here the unreferenced files is the second raml file the alternate raml file which i've shown you for understanding purposes uh, but this file is not being used in our root file so this file is usually neglected but we would not care we would go ahead and include the unreferenced files and publish once once you're done with your publishing you would be redirected to the any point exchange here you can download your code as a raml as a os file or as a mule 4 connector you can view code you can you can see when it was published on by whom it was published and the visibility level here the visibility is private across the organization xyz uh, this is the first version of this application so the version is 1.0.0 you can also import export your code here you have options to download your application you can get the version details you can depreciate your current version if you have multiple versions in this section of exchange then you can simply depreciate the current version and roll back to your previous version you can also delete a version completely so that you don't have an option to roll back here on the left side you can see the list of resources and the associated methods we have two resources employee list and get list this is the root raml file so we have two different methods post we also have types these are the types which are associated with this root file here we have simple type complex json type transaction model tree brochure status all which we have defined we also have securities like basic authentication soon enough when you hit on post here you have all your code examples query parameters in the body section which has the actual example and the type definitions which you bought from the data types uh, you have you can also view your message the response is 201 with the message record created you can visualize it in a tabular format you can also see the query parameters the mocking service once you hit on send the application is going to get mocked and a 201 status a record created will be displayed at your application you can go to home you can see if there is any description you can move to your uh, global assets here i have two assets one is my salesforce api and my first api design under my applications uh, I would not be having anything under provided by MuleSoft you will be having all the list of connectors and the code representations and the contributions which are done by MuleSoft here you can see uh, SAP connectors, Salesforce connectors, Amazon S3, two-factor authentication etc you can also publish a new asset if you like 